Man, I am so pumped she's doing this. Okay, well, I guess I can make it official since she just put the word out, but Courtney DeWalter next week is going to be attempting a 500 mile run. She's going to be running the Colorado Trail uh, from point to point, starting in Durango, ending in Denver, and I am really excited to announce I'm gonna be going along for the ride. I'll be out there the entire time. We are shooting for around eight days and I'm gonna be filming an episode for Solomon TV. So this is the biggest filming project that I've ever been a part of, that I've ever undertaken. I am definitely a little bit nervous, but also super excited. I've been getting some of my filming equipment ready here, uh, buying some new gear and getting some of the logistics figured out. It's going to be quite the adventure, and I definitely want to share some of that with you guys while I'm out there. I'm probably going to be posting some behind-the-scenes videos um, from some of the days out there. Obviously, I'm going to be focusing on capturing all the footage for this episode and putting it all together. I am actually packing up today as I'm heading up to Tusher's Mountain Runs in Utah. We are putting that on with Aravipa Running this weekend. We were able to get permission to do that event with some modifications for what's going on right now with the pandemic. Um, but right after that, I'll be heading straight over to Colorado and hitting the trail. Would love to have you guys follow along. This is going to be an amazing journey. Courtney is well known for her endurance, for being one of the top athletes at any distance, especially as the distances get longer and longer. She, of course, won the Moab 240 outright, and I believe has the record out there. She's won the Tahoe 200. She's done well at 24 hours, UTMB, Western States. I mean, name it, she's done it. I am so pumped to be on this journey and to be heading out there with her and with all the other amazing people. I'm really excited to get back in my own personal groove. I have not been running much lately, as you guys if, who follow me on Strava know very well. I was able to get up to Colorado shortly, just for a couple days, and this is gonna be kind of my big summer vacation. Uh, I do have one other videographer that's gonna be joining for part of the trip, but otherwise it'll mainly be me out there capturing all kinds of footage. My plan is to run with her for a pretty big section each day and also getting you know other crew footage and other stuff that's going on. So equipment wise, I know most of you guys probably don't care about film equipment, but I'm sure some of you guys are. Got a new setup. My main camera here will be the Sony a7 III. I will also have a secondary Sony camera kind of as a backup with a longer lens on it. This one will be on a gimbal and this is the Weebill S. This thing is really cool because it has uh, like an underslung mode, so I can literally kind of hold it like this. It has a secondary handle, not just this one, so I'll be able to run behind with her. I've also got a screen on here so I can see what's going on. That's going to be super clutch, I think. I've been using a Ma original Mavic Pro drone as well as the Mavic Mini. I decided that this project definitely needed as high quality aerial shots as I could get. I just picked up this. Uh, Mavic Air 2 drone. I haven't flown this one yet. As you can see, it literally just came in today. So I'm gonna be uh, hopefully putting that to the test up at Tusher's this weekend. And then of course, I've got a couple of the GoPro Hero 8s. I'm gonna be sending one of these with Courtney on some sections and also with some of her other pacers. You know, I can't run every mile with her, uh, but I, like I said, I do hope to get out there for you know a chunk of each day, maybe some of the most scenic sections out there and yeah, I had a chance to sit down with Courtney and talk a little bit about why she's doing this. I'm not gonna give away the whole interview. I can share a couple clips so you can hear from her in her mind, what's going on, why she's doing this. I think it's a unique opportunity for her with all of these races canceled. You know, there's supported races, they only go up to a certain distance. So around like the 250 mile range, is about where they top out. It just kind of becomes unfeasible at some point to provide that kind of support. And when she's out there anyways, she's getting a lot of support from her crew regardless. So it kind of makes a lot of sense to do something like the Colorado Trail. I know it's close to home for her, so it's kind of a perfect fit. It's kind of the next natural step of, like I just keep wondering how far we can go and then 
specifically like how efficiently we can cover distances as the days get longer. So um, having, you know, the trail that is in the state I live in be 500 miles is a pretty great coincidence of, you know, that's the next mileage goal I've been, you know, kind of eyeing. And then here we are with a free summer to try it in my home state. So it's, it was kind of a no brainer that this would be a cool thing to try out. Has this been brewing for a while or is this like, oh, everything got canceled. What am I going to do? And then just popped into your head. No, it's been brewing. I think ever since like discovering that 200 miles is possible and doing some of those 200 mile races, I've, you know, wondered then what the next thing could be and um, have been eyeing the Colorado Trail for probably now, I mean, three years for sure. It was a long time coming and it just is lucky that there are no races because otherwise it probably would have been a few more years before yeah. it would have fit in. And then, cause yeah, there's no fi real 500 mile races out there. So, and I'd yeah. imagine like when you do something like Moab 240, I mean, does it kind of feel like this anyways? I mean, it's not like you're probably running near many other people other than maybe the first day or even the first few miles. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a solo mission that you get to share with. Like I was never considering doing it unsupported um, because sharing it with people is so fun and and building those memories of, you know, whatever happens out there together is is definitely part of it for me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll just be Moab times two. <laughs> right. Yeah, easy. Nothing to it. Uh, hopefully we will connect with some of the other record holders while we're out there. It's a little bit about the Colorado Trail. For those of you who don't know, I'm on fastestknowntime.com, which is a great website for speed records, finding out really cool routes and what people have done on them. So it's roughly 500 miles from Denver to Durango. She's going the opposite way, Durango to Denver, kind of finishing closer to her home. And it spans six wilderness areas, eight mountain ranges, and it says it was first conceived in 1974 but it was not completed until the late 1980s. And what's really cool is that the first ever, I guess, FKT or record was set by Dale Garland, Dave Laframboise, John Mechaward, and John Wolgamott. And they did it in 17 days back in 1988 in July. I think the trail was just barely kind of completed then, or maybe not even quite complete. So that's pretty cool. Dale is the race director for Hard Rock 100. So that's kind of a cool tie-in. And the women's best, Betsy Kalmeyer ran it supported in nine days, 10 hours, 52 minutes back in 2003. And that might have been, wow, that's crazy. It looks like that was the same year that Hal Kerner did it and he ran 30 minutes faster. So she might have held the record for a couple days, like the overall record. Hal Kerner, yeah, came in in 2003. Um, Buzz Burrell did it in 1999. Jonathan Basham, he did it in 2006. So there's some really awesome people that have done this. Joe Grant did it supported in eight days, 20 hours in 2019, so last year. So kind of a pretty rich history. The current record is held by Brian Williams. That was set in 2017 at eight days, 30 minutes. So Courtney is, I think, a great person to go after this. She's someone that is gonna push it hard. And I'm not gonna make any predictions right now, but I think she could definitely do something special out here. She's got, yeah, I mean, there's no other races this year to take the focus away. So it's pretty awesome that she's giving this an attempt. I'm sure you guys are, will follow along. I think the best way to follow uh, from day to day will be Courtney's Instagram page or also I think Solomon Running. They're gonna be posting some on there. So I guess before I pack up and get on the road here, I just wanna start off by first off thanking Courtney for inviting me to come on this trip. She reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be involved. And then also to Solomon and Solomon Running for the opportunity to help tell this story this is not, like I said, not something exactly that I've done before. I am really, really excited to sink my teeth into a project like this and to help tell Courtney's story and to help show this amazing wilderness landscape that is the Colorado Trail. 
I'm sure there's going to be plenty of antics along the way, just knowing Courtney and her crew. They are just nothing but fun to be around and have such a positive spirit. So yeah, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys get the latest updates. If you want to support the channel and the work we do here, check out runsteep.com. We've got a store over there, or you can join us over on our Patreon page at Steep Life Media. We'd love to have your support. That about wraps it up. I'm going to get packing and try and get out of town, get out of this heat, and try and head on up to Utah here. All right, see you guys.